Hey guys, so Tesla just released a new firmware version for their vehicles that doesn't introduce anything game changing or groundbreaking, but it does improve upon some features that were added in the version 11 holiday update that was released in late 2021. So with version 11, we got a lot of great changes to the UI that improved functionality and freshened up the overall feel of the car. It added more customization, more color, and hints at a potential app store where developers can create apps for Teslas that will be placed in this app drawer. Maybe like Twitter? Now, this level of customization made getting to frequently used apps really easy as before, you couldn't say place Spotify directly in your bottom bar. What frustrated some users though, is that it now became more difficult to access climate controls like your front front and rear defroster, heated seats, and your windshield wipers. To access these, you need to open the entire climate menu and find these toggles, or you could swipe up on that bottom bar to access a smaller menu for quick access to certain settings. On the older software version before version 11, there was easy access to these controls at the bottom of the screen, so taking them away again frustrated those that say lived in a colder climate and wanted quick access to defrosting and heated seat toggles. I for one know that I became a little bit frustrated trying to get to those heated seat controls. I didn't know if I wanted to swipe up and turn them on. I didn't know if I wanted to access the full climate menu. It was always a little bit confusing making that change, but luckily right around the same time, Tesla introduced this automated heated seat function. So I just left my heated seats on auto and I really didn't have to mess with them. The climate would then regulate the temperature of my seats. So therefore I didn't need to do anything. Now looking at the new bottom bar in this update shows just how empty it is. Like there is a lot of room that isn't being utilized, but luckily with this new update, with this new firmware version, we can now add more toggles. So we can add the heated seats and now fills up some empty space and doesn't make this bottom bar feel jumbled. The heated seats actually don't take up a custom app down here, so you'll still have room to add five other applications with four new options. These are the front defroster, the rear defroster, the heated steering wheel, and wipers. The way that I currently have mine set up is heated seat controls added to the bottom bar, the heated steering wheel, the energy app, the streaming app, messages, and the camera app. This change was definitely much needed, and it's great that Tesla included it within this version. Although as we're now moving into the summer months, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be making use of my heated seats and my heated steering wheel. Maybe on like a cold night when I'm driving with the windows down, it'd be nice to have the heated seats on as well. But other than that, I don't think I'm going to be using them all that much. But that's the great thing about customization is that I can change my car depending on what I want to use it for. And that changes depending on the season. So it's great that I could remove those functions and replace them with other applications if I wanted to, again, depending on the weather outside. Now, the next change that we have here is actually within the Tesla app. So you want to make sure that along with updating your car, you also have your app updated to the newest version. Now, from your main screen, when you enter the climate tab, you can now swipe up and remotely turn on dog or camp mode. And I always wondered why these were left out of the app. I mean, I guess typically these two modes were activated directly from your car. I mean, if you're camping, you're probably going to be near your car. And if you're turning on dog mode, you're probably remembering that, hey, my dog's in the backseat. I've got to turn on dog mode before I get out of the car, plug in my charger, plug in my car and go inside to get some coffee. But there have been times where I get inside to that coffee shop and say, hey, I totally forgot to turn on dog mode. So now it's nice to at least have the function to check and turn it on remotely. Now, the final listed change that was made in this update is to the rear seat child lock. So now you have the ability to enable the child lock on either both doors or just one of the doors, which is a nice touch to further the customization that these cars offer. Now, there were also a couple of undocumented changes in this update that weren't listed on the screen when you get into your car after updating, and most of them are just bug fixes. For starters, the browser has been updated from Chromium 88 to Chromium 99, which is a nice change, but quite frankly, the web browser is still a big weak point of Tesla's infotainment system, in my opinion. I'd much rather just pull out my phone where my passwords are saved and the pages open faster, but I've noticed a general improvement here, making it more usable, which is always nice to see. Another welcome change is the moving of the compass button, which is now located in the top right corner of the map where it's always been positioned. It also constantly stays visible and never goes away, so it doesn't hide. It just always stays present. In the V11 update, it was switched to the top left corner, which threw me off for the longest time, but now it's back in its regular spot in the top right corner. Another bug that was absolutely killing me was the superchargers list that would cover the supercharger that I was trying to look at. Here, after this update, it centers the charger that I'm looking at properly right in the middle of the screen and the menu on the left side, but before, it would center for the whole screen, not accounting for this list, so it would cover important information like the number of stalls and the speed of the charger. This is definitely going to save me a ton of headaches 
when looking for chargers on the road in the future. And from there, the rest of the changes that were made in this update are specific to certain regions and specific versions of different Tesla vehicles. So if you want to read about all the changes made across Tesla's entire fleet, I'm going to leave a link in the description to check out all of those patch notes. But for now, that's pretty much everything. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.